we've plugged in the equation and now hit graph. I can see it has two real roots. Come off to the far side, two real roots. And the cool thing about this is regardless of what form the equation is in, when you plug it into the calculator and you hit the button that says trace, please do so, every single time it is going to tell you exactly, it's going to tell you exactly what the y-intercept is. Now for today, we are going to round decimals to the nearest tenth. So find the column that says y-intercept and write 0 and 8.3 and I round it. I guess I didn't need to put the line above it because I told you to round to the nearest tenth. Okay, so I can see that, see it says the equation up above and it's really hard to see the top part. Hit the button that says trace, oh sorry, windows. Hit the button that says windows and I want you to scroll down to where you find y maximum. That's going to allow us to raise the window up so that we can see the top of the parabola. Right now it's only going as high as 10. Please change that to a number like 15 or 20. Then hit graph. I changed mine to 20 and now I can clearly see the top. So this is a parabola that has a vertex that is going to be represented as a maximum. There's no minimum here because the vertex, sorry, the parabola opens downward. So I'm going to come over here to max them in. I know there's no minimum value, so I'm going to put NA. And now I'm going to find out what the actual vertex is. Now, the cool thing about this is it's in vertex form. So the vertex is negative 1, 9. So negative 1, 9. And for quadratic functions, whatever your x value is, that'll be the number we use when identifying the equation of the axis of symmetry. And we know that we have a maximum value at this turning point or this vertex. The maximum value is your y. So your y value here is y equals 9. And now I need to identify the two real roots. This is continuously difficult for certain students. So I'm going to slow this part down. Everybody look up here, please. The calculator is going to give you directions, and here's where students get confused. So here, I'm at this point right here. And if you're told to walk, pretend you're at this point, you're told to walk along this line, but you have to go to the left. If you're at this point and you're told to walk along this line, but you have to go to the left, would that mean I go up or I go down? And if you're at this point and you're told you have to stay along the line but walk to the right, you'd go? Oh. Okay, now it's different here. Look over here. You're at this point, you pretend this is like a sidewalk, and you're told you have to walk to the left. Would you go up or down? Okay. And if you're told to walk to the right, you're going to go? Yeah. Now, why is that important? Here we go. Please follow along. Do seconds, trace, and find the word that says zero. Remember, zero, roots, solutions, and x-intercepts are all interchangeable. Press enter. It says left bound. Take that arrow and go over the top. Do not press enter. Go over the top where you see the X intercept. Again, that's you. Picture yourself. You're standing there. You're at this point. You have to follow along the sidewalk, but you're told to walk left. Again, do we go down or do we go up? So go slightly down and now press enter. Now go back to the intersection point. And now you're told to go to the right of this point, but stay on the sidewalk. So you're going to go up. Press enter again. Now guess, go over the top of it and press enter. We will round to the nearest tenth. So one of the zeros, or x-intercepts, will be negative 4.70. Okay, second, trace, zero. Please do it again. Now use the cursor and go to the next x-intercept. When you're there, follow the instructions. You're here at this intersection point and it says you need to stay on the sidewalk, but you need to walk to the left. So in this case, I'm going to go up. Press enter. Then go back to where they intersect. Now follow the directions. Now it says right, so you're going to go down. 
press enter. To guess it, you go back to where the two lines, the x-intercept and our graph intersect, and press enter. So 2.7 rounded to the nearest tenth will be the x-intercept written as an ordered pair. It looks like this. Please do second plus 712. Second plus 712. Okay, so that was in, this was in vertex form. We're going to do one in standard form. I'd like you to find the one that has the fractions. Reset your calculator, then go to y equals. This is going to be written as a negative sign. So parenthesis, negative one half. Outside of the parenthesis will be x squared. Then it is a subtraction sign, parenthesis one-fourth. Outside of the parenthesis will be an x. And a plus two. Can you let me know right now? Raise your hand if I'm going at a speed that allows you to keep up. Hands up high so I can see. I know I may not be able to keep, you know, go slow enough for everybody, but I want to make sure I'm not leaving you behind. Okay, let's hit graph. So how many real x-intercepts do we have, or real roots? Two, so I go straight across to two. Also, we have a high point here because it opens down, so I'm going to have a maximum but no minimum. So find minimum, and a. Please hit the word trace. Please hit the word trace. And immediately I can see that the y-intercept is 0, 2. Remember that in standard form, one of the advantages is identifying the y-intercept right away. So either with the calculator or simply looking, we could see the y-intercept is 0, 2. Okay, so I'm going to find that maximum point, the vertex, the maximum point. So to do that, Grab your calculator and go second trace and go to maximum. Left bound means go left of where you think the highest point occurs. So anywhere to the left. Sometimes students go, well, how far do I go to the left? Just anywhere to the left of the highest point and press enter. Then go up and over the hill anywhere to the right of the highest point and press enter. And then to the very highest, and I'm going to guess where I think the highest occurs, and I press enter a last time. This is, this is right here is going to be the ordered pair for the maximum, and I'm going to round to the nearest tenth. Now remember, just like your minimum had just a y value, the same thing will happen for maximum. So y equals rounded to the nearest tenth is 2.0. Your maximum value can also be used for your vertex. It's coming from the same point. So my vertex is rounded negative 0.2 and 2.0. And remember, your x value for the vertex with quadratic functions will always correspond to the equation for the axis of symmetry. The only thing remaining will be the x-intercepts. Please go second trace and zero. Again, as a reminder, zero solutions. Um, zero solutions, I'm forgetting one of them. X-intercepts and roots are all interchangeable words. Press enter. Take the cursor and go over where you see the first x-intercept. Pretending this is a sidewalk, you're asked to stay on the sidewalk, but to go to the left at this point. So I go somewhere below the x-intercept. Then go back to the intersection. Go right of this intersection, but stay on the sidewalk. So go up above, press enter, and then back over the top. Rounding it to the nearest, rounding it to the nearest tenth, negative 2.30. Do the same process again. Second trace zero.
take the cursor and put it over the top of where the x axis and your function meet. And now follow the instructions. So stay on the side, with, but go to the left of the x-axis. So I'm going to go somewhere up above and press enter. Then go back to where they intersect and follow the instructions. Now this time, go right. So I'm going to go down below and press enter. And then go over the top and guess. Pressing enter a third time. And I'm going to round to the nearest tenth, which is approximately 1.8. Zero. One to five, if speed is not a factor, how well are you understanding? One to five. Hands up so I can see from where I am. It's okay to be a one or two? Okay, we are going to find the first factored form. So go down below and find the first factored form. Then reset your calculator. The advantage of factored form is we can see an, a hidden A value of 1, so I know that this parabola opens up, and I can easily identify both the y-intercept and the x. So let's do that right away. Um, I know that one of the x-intercepts is, remember it's opposite sign here, so 3 halves 0 is 1, and negative 5, 0 is the other. There's two of them. And I also can tell what the y-intercept is by multiplying these three numbers. So let's just clear the calculator and multiply those. 5 times negative 3 halves. Remember, the negative is below the 3. And there's a 1 out front that's hiding. But when you multiply it by 1, it's not going to change the value. So the y-answer is negative 7.5. Okay, let's go back up to y equals and let's plug in the equation. So x subtract, okay, now it's getting tricky here. Parentheses 3 divided by 2 and then end parentheses. So I've actually done two starting parentheses and two ending. And then x plus 5. When you're done with that, hit graph. By a raise of hands, who already has this on the graphing calculator? Hands up so I can see. Okay. Do you agree we can't, we can't exactly see the vertex? So we need to lower this. Go to trace, sorry, go to windows, and find the y value for a minimum. Negative 10 wasn't low enough for us to see it, so let's lower it to like negative 20. And when we get back from break, we'll talk about using the zoom feature to do this for us, but... For now, we're going to just uh, mess with the windows. So now I can see it. Okay, here we go. So let's find what this vertex is. Second, trace. I know it's a minimum value. The turning point of vertex is the lowest point, so hit minimum. And by the way, the first thing we see is the y-intercept, and we are correct. So go to the left of the lowest point, anywhere to the left, and press enter. Then use the cursor to go anywhere to the right of the lowest point and press enter. Then right over the top of the lowest point and press enter a third time. And I'm going to round to the nearest tenth. So negative 1.8 and negative 10.6. And as a reminder, for quadratic functions, your x value will always come from the x of the vertex. Done, done, done. Now, is this considered a maximum or a minimum? minimum? This is the minimum. So I go to the maximum and I write NA. And it's always Y equals the value of the vertex, which is negative 10.6.